Before we can talk about methods to write equivalent expressions, we need to talk a little bit about this word term. Identifying the terms of an expression seems a little bit complicated at first, but it very quickly becomes a habit and seems fairly straightforward. So here's the big idea. When the last operation to be done in an expression is called addition, when the last operation that's going to be done in an expression is addition, then the sub-expressions that are going to be added together are called terms. So let me give you a simple example. In the expression 2x plus 5 plus 3x plus 1, those four sub-expressions that I'm adding together, 2x, 5, 3x, and 1 are all terms. This expression has four terms, namely those four. Here's a more complicated example. In this expression, again, addition is the last operation we're going to do. And when we do that addition, 5 times x minus y and 6 times 2x plus 1 are the terms. Now, these sub-expressions are much more complicated than these ones were. But they are things that are going to be added together in the last step. Therefore, they are the terms. Now, notice I said addition, not subtraction. But wait, didn't I say that addition and subtraction are just two sides of the same thing? Yes, that's absolutely true. Whenever we're thinking about terms, if we see subtraction, we should rewrite it as adding the opposite. So what do I mean by that? Let's look at an example. Here we have an expression where the last operations we'll do will be addition and subtraction. Everywhere I see subtraction, I'm going to, instead of minus, write plus the opposite. And again, I'm just including the parentheses so that I can see that that's really plus a negative. Oh, but now I can easily see what the terms are. We have 5z. We have negative 7z squared. We have 21. We have negative 5z, and we have negative 16. Okay, so let's take a look at the anatomy of a term. Here's an expression with three terms, negative 4x, 3x plus 1, and 2 thirds x squared. Notice all of these terms are made up of two parts, namely a number and then a variable expression. And they're just written next to each other, so that means that they are multiplied together. So the number part of the term is called the coefficient. In this example, in the term negative 4x, the coefficient is negative 4. In the term 3x plus 1, the coefficient is 3. In the term 2 thirds x squared, the coefficient is 2 thirds. So, 
The number part of the term is called the coefficient. The variable part of the term is creatively called the variable part. So the big vocabulary word here is coefficient. In the negative 4x term, the variable part is just the x. In the 3x plus 1 term, the variable part is x plus 1. And in the 2 thirds x squared term, the variable part is x squared. Right. Notice, again, the term is just made up of the coefficient and the variable part multiplied together. With that in mind, we can describe something called like terms. Two terms are called like terms if their variable parts are exactly the same. So for example, in this expression, right, notice I see subtraction that I'm going to rewrite as plus the negative here and also here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven terms. Of those, two-thirds x and five x are like terms. They have exactly the same variable parts, namely just x. Let's see, what else? 4y squared and 8y squared are like terms. Their variable part is y squared. Um, oh, and I guess 16 and negative 24 are like terms. They have no variable part. On the other hand, 4y squared and negative 7y, those are not like terms. Why not? Because y and y squared are different from each other. 